a tremendous, and especially now with uh, Trevor Noah, uh, sympathy for the Palestinians. And now, now the Palestinian issue is coming around that uh, Israel will be seen again as a pariah. And here in California, we, you were just talking about uh, uh, the, the strong left presence here. What would you say to the public who assumes that if someone's Jewish, they're going to support Israel um, prima facie? I would say that if you're ethnically Jewish, that's an indicator that you probably don't support Israel. The fact is, po po speaking in terms of polls, the, the vast majority of the Jewish community has no interest in Jewish religion or in the Jewish state. And so treating people who are born Jewish as though they have any more authority than anybody else to speak about the state of Israel is idiotic. I mean, it's like saying, it's like polling people who are born Catholic on matters about Catholicism. The question isn't, were you born Catholic? The question is, are you a practicing Catholic? So, you know, for those of us who actually care about the practice of Judaism and who actually care about Israel, those of us, you know, we tend to be conservative. Everybody who is, who's, you know, non-practicing, they, they go to synagogue once a year on Yom Kippur and break for lunch. I mean, why, why would you expect them to care about Israel or Judaism? What do you think about The Jewish Federation tends to be left because most of the people at the top of, of the Jewish Federation tend to be Reform and Conservative Jews. Again, the, the, the correlation is, is not causation, but it is, it is pretty clear that, cor speaking of correlation, Orthodox Jews vote heavily Republican, conservative and Reform Jews who have significantly less of, a, of a, an identity with authentic Torah Judaism, but have plenty of identity with bagels and matzo balls and claims of victimhood. You know, the, they tend to occupy a lot of the Jewish federations around the country. So if the media is leftist dominant, uh, how are uh, Jewish people, to, especially young Jewish people, to get a good sense of uh, what's happening and, and, and how they should view things? Well, I mean, this is one of the things that I like about the fact the media is fragmenting, is you can have so many sources of information, places like your source. There are many sources that, that you can look, but it's up to parents, particularly when talking about young Jewish people, to start introducing their kids to various other sources of information other than the traditional sources that kids will get when they go to school or when they turn on Trevor Noah, who, by the way, is a hack, or, or when they turn on any of the other various mainstream news networks, with the possible exception of Fox. Uh, would you uh, characterize John Stewart? Uh, who people think of as a, a, a great Jew in media, as a, 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 as in fact a great Jew? Based on what would I call him a great Jew? I mean, really, like I, I can't think of a single standard by which I would call John Leibowitz a great Jew. Well, what, what would you consider him uh, as, as having done? Who is prominent? He's an ethnic Jew who is prominent. That's not the same thing. Noam Chomsky is also an ethnic Jew who's prominent. I wouldn't call him a great Jew either. Do you feel the Daily Show is being used for um, as a political advoca advocacy? I mean, of course, of course. That's exactly what it is. I mean, it's just a, it's an advocacy show. Absolutely. And unfortunately for them, Trevor Noah is not nearly as talented as being, at being a political hack as, as John Stewart was, and they, he's really a step down. You take away for for Stewart or or Trevor Noah, you take away the you take away the audience, and the show dies. So Trevor Noah, who, as I say, is in a running three-way street battle for least funny comedian in America uh, with Amy Schumer. Uh, and uh, the, the third person always tends to vary. Sometimes I've said that it is John Oliver, although I think John Oliver is, uh, is better than that. Uh, sometimes I've said W. Camu Bell, who truly is an awful comedian. Um, but Trevor Noah, uh, he did a segment on his show last night about how he was back in South Africa, which is the country from which he hails, and he came back, and it turns out that America is the, is the Third Reich. So now, I was like, okay, this is not a vacation, this is chaos. But I still had a week of my break left. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go back to America and just chill. <laughs> Turns out, I left the Third World and landed in the Third Reich. Okay, no you didn't, you stupid moron. You did not land in the Third Reich, okay, I promise you. See this on my head? You see how I'm sitting here doing a show? You see how my entire family is fine? This is not the Third Reich, my friend. This nonsense where you compare America to the Third Reich because President Trump says stupid crap all the time, that is just, it's insane. And, and again, you talk about the media driving people into the arms of Trump. When you label everyone a Nazi, it turns out people get mad. It turns out people get mad. It turns out that people have a right to be angry when you suggest that America is Nazi Germany in 2017. Hey, Trevor Noah is sitting there doing a nationally televised TV show talking about the Third Reich in America. Do you think that Hitler allowed people to do that? It's such stupid exaggeration, and it's not even funny. It's not even funny. It's just dumb. There's nothing in the Bible that says, take away the swords of the people who want to defend themselves. 
What absolute asininity. But anybody who says we're going to pray for people and then doesn't agree with Samantha B, she's fine with Hillary praying or Obama praying. Hillary said in her speech, pray for the victims. She's fine with that, but she's pissed if somebody like me says I'll pray for the victims because I disagree with her on policy. Whoopi Goldberg, too. Well, actually, let's go to Trevor Noah first. Tre so we're going through all the most unfunny people from Comedy Central. you got Stephen Colbert, who used to be on Comedy Central and is no longer funny. Samantha B, who's never very funny. And Trevor Noah, who in the womb must have been just – smacked with the unfunny jar like god god took down the various jars to make a human being and he took the humorlessness jar and he poured it all over trevor noah as a, as a prenatally here's trevor noah saying that that he wants your gun he wants your gun right now and the saddest part is every time this happens it feels like america has already decided this is exactly the kind of country it wants to be because we know how this always plays out we're shocked we mourn we change our profile pics and then we move on it's become normal, but I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, maybe it's because I'm new, but it's not normal, and it shouldn't be normal. We shouldn't allow this to be normal. It's not a normal thing. It's like milk from almonds or sushi from Walgreens. It's not normal, people. <laughs> What's also not normal is having the same thing happen to us over and over and over <coughs> again and doing nothing to change it. That's not normal. Okay, it's not normal, and he's going to lecture us because he has a British accent. That's how this works. He comes over here, and he, he's like Beers Morgan. He comes over here, and he lectures us about how he knows what's normal and what's not normal. How about, how about the rape of Europe by Muslim immigrants in terms of the crime rate? How about that? Is that normal? Is that the new normal? How about the destruction of the Middle East by radical Muslims? Is that normal, or do you not care about that? How about the fact that the guy who just shot 49 people was a radical Muslim? Do you not care about that, or is that the new normal for you? It seems like you want to import a lot of people who believe like this guy does. Is that your new normal? But apparently it's the new normal. I'm not treating it as normal when someone gets shot. That's why I'm angry at the government. What I am saying is that it would be nice if somebody there had the capacity to put this bastard down. That would be a good thing. Your solution is disarm the gay guy and also the terrorist. My solution is you're not going to be able to disarm the terrorist. He's a terrorist. Disarm anybody in this – disarm the gay guy in this situation, and you basically guarantee that he's unarmed against somebody with a gun. But I, I'm sick of hearing the, the moral posturing from the left, but they, they all do this. They all do this, and this is, this is the universal appeal, but it's not going to work. It's not going to work because Americans don't want to hear about how it was the gun's fault that a radical Muslim who had homosexual tendencies and went to this bar regularly, apparently attempting to pick up dudes, that this guy, he's the reason I can't have an AR-15. Just like, just like you know, Justin Bieber getting in car accidents is the reason I can't have a Lamborghini. I'm sorry. It has nothing to do with me. This is totally dumb. Whoopi Goldberg does the same thing. It's a universal way from the left. Whenever the left says they care about terrorism and also gun control, what they're really saying is we only care about gun control. Please, please, maybe it's my age. How come adults don't get it? They do. They they do. No, they don't get it's it. About no, 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 it's about listen, money. It's about money. It's about a lot of different things. You know, it's about a, a, an amendment in the Constitution that people misread. The Constitution doesn't say you can carry hundreds of guns. It says you can you can protect your home. It says you can protect yourself. It doesn't say get 55 guns. It's or, not or in the military style. It, you know, and and people say, well, we need to have our guns because we can, you know, go shoot. You can't hunt anything with an assault rifle. You can't do it. There's nothing left after you. It's gone. Okay, she doesn't know anything about quote unquote assault rifles. People hunt with AR-15s all the time. It's the most popular hunting rifle in the United States. In any case, but, you know, don't expect IQ points from a show that has combined less IQ points than the number of fingers that I am currently holding up. Right? I mean, there's nobody on that show with any semblance of IQ or decency, and they all get it wrong. But is it possible that she might actually be black. And I, the, the best way that I know how to describe this, and I want to be very careful here, because I don't want to say that it is equivalent to the transgender experience, but there is a useful language in trans and cis, which is just to say some of us are born cisgendered, some of us are born transgendered, but I wonder, can it be that one would be cis black and trans black? That there, that there is actually a different category of blackness that is about the achievement of blackness despite one's parentage. Is that possible? It's absolutely possible. I mean, there, that, that, wh why not? I mean, I think that one thing that she said that I found so fascinating was she said her identity is multi-layered and that her identity is very complicated and that she didn't expect 
for people to understand it easily. And I think what she's alluding to is this sort of perhaps, and again, we don't know that much about the story. You know, we need to hear more from her and mm -hmm. more of her of her personal story. But but there there certainly is a chance that 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 she identifies as a black woman and that that that, that there could be authenticity.